is Judy Novak again with the continued part two demonstration of SEC 503 or SAN Security 503 intrusion detection in depth track. And we're doing a demonstration of the type of hands on activity or exercises you might do if you take the course. So when we left off in part one, we had discovered that we had exfiltration. What we want to do right now is to figure out the story behind the exfiltration. First of all, can we discover why that particular host, 192.168.11.23, was doing the exfiltration in the first place? And the other thing that we need to discover is, are any other hosts on the 192.168.11 network involved in this type of activity? So we can turn to TCP dump, and TCP dump, as you'll see here, is a really good tool to use for a high-level view. In this case, we're going to read the PCAP, where the, all the traffic is captured. The minus NT option says minus N, don't do hostname resolution. T, suppress the timestamp output on the screen. And then I've got a Berkeley packet filter here between the single quotes. As the name implies, it's going to filter out traffic only that we want to see. So for instance, here host 184.168.221.63 is going to show us any traffic to or from that host and not host 192.168.11.23. That was the original host where we found the exfiltration. At this point, we're looking for any other host that might be doing exfiltration. And let's see what we've got. We find that there are no other hosts that appear to be doing exfiltration. So now we're at the point where we have to discover the story behind the, uh, the exfiltration. What I'm turning to now is TCP dump again, but we're going to look at DNS resolution, port 53, specifically for the malicious IP address, the one that was receiving the exfiltration data. Port 53, or DNS, is really good because we might find clues of a hostname resolution that had the response of 184.168.221.63. If we can find that, we may be able to search for content in the PCAP that gives us some clues about the origins of the exfiltration or uh, what caused the exfiltration. And what we see here is a DNS response. So a DNS server is sending from port 53 to 192.168.11.23, that was the host that was involved in the exfiltration, and it's sending it to port 50775, and we've got a, uh, a resolution, address resolution of 184.168.221.63. Okay, that's great. Now, let's see if we can find the request. That has the information that we would like, namely the host name, and to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to isolate this particular DNS transfer in the PCAP. And we assume that port 50775 is unique since it's the ephemeral port. So let's try this. And what we see here is that 192.168.11.23 from ephemeral port 50775 to destination IP 192.168.11.1, our DNS server, destination port 53, did a, an address resolution request of sec503evil.com. Okay, so that's a good clue. At this point, what we want to do is look for that particular content in payload. And when we're talking content or we're talking payload, we need to go back to Wireshark. Wireshark is what we use to look for content or payload. And I have a, um, a display filter that is in my pull-down menu because I've done this before. 
and it's looking for sec503evil.com in TCP traffic. Now, it could be in UDP as well, but I'm going to try TCP first because that is the uh, predominant transport layer on the Internet. And let's see what we get here. And it looks like we do have some content here. It's a push record. And as you can see in the bytes pane of Wireshark, we've got sec503evil.com. That's pretty interesting. Let's see if we can analyze the TCP stream. And what we find is a message to 192.168.11.23, connect to sec503evil.com. So that kind of makes sense. All right, let's close this. Another thing we might want to do is check all traffic to TCP port 54321. And what we see is that we have several sessions here, quite a few. Let's take a look and analyze the first session. All right, we've got a message, but this time it's status quo. That doesn't appear to be too uh, revealing. Let's try another one. Again, a status quo. And what you would find if you were to look at all of these streams or sessions it, is that most of them have status quo and one of them has the connect message there. So what we can assume is that this is some kind of command and control channel. And our IP or 192.168.11.23 is part of a botnet. So we're going to stop right there. You could go on and do additional kinds of investigation, especially if you had more traffic, to try to understand how the host got uh, infiltrated in the first place so that it is part of the botnet. But I'm just going to wrap up at this point. So let's recap what we did and what tools we used. First, we assume that Bro was running and it fired on a production script, a Bro script, that looked for large SMTP MIME attachments. We found one, we isolated it in the PCAP using Wireshark. Then, when we followed the stream to look for content, we discovered that the attachment was Base64 encoded. We had to save that to raw content to a file and edited the file to remove everything except the Base64 text, and we had to convert to Linux line endings. Next, we decoded the Base64 text using the command line utility, Base64, to discover that the user-associated personal data records were exfiltrated to IP address 184.168.221.63. So then we tried to find any more activity to that IP address using TCP dump, but found none, meaning that the only host involved in the exfiltration was 192.168.11.23. And once again, we used TCP dump to find the IP address of 184.168.221.63 in DNS resolution, we found the response and created a new TCP dump filter to find the associated request. That exposed sec503evil.com as the host name, and we then used Wireshark to find TCP content leading us to the command and control traffic over port 54321 to host 1.1.1.1. So you can see we used a variety of tools and methods to navigate our way through the traffic to find the story behind it. All of these tools are covered in great detail in SANS SEC 503. You'll have ample opportunity to explore them all with hands-on exercises, very similar to this demonstration. I hope this has been helpful to you, and I hope this convinces you to sign up to take the course. Thanks for joining me today.